Hey, welcome back to my channel. So I bought a new table saw, as you guys can see behind me here. It is a saw stop. It's their professional three horsepower model, and it's a great saw. But this video is not about the saw. It's gonna be about how to make a crosscut sled for it. I have owned many table saws in the past, and every single table saw that I have owned, these miter slots are never in the same spot in correlation to the blade. Even the width of the miter slot varies between table saw to table saw. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to make some runners to fit these slots exactly. I'm gonna make the runners from this piece of maple and I'm just gonna run it through my planer until it fits my miter slot exactly. I don't want it to be too tight, but I also don't want it too loose. So I'm just gonna slowly creep up on it until it fits exactly. So it's gonna be a lot of running back and forth between my table saw and the planer. So I got that plane down real nice. There is maybe just a little bit of play, but I'm not too concerned about that. When I attach the top, I can either shim them out or in to get rid of that. So now we need to cut them to the right width. And all I'm gonna do is get a pencil, mark that, rip it on the table saw. So I have the runners cut so that they're just below the surface of the table saw. So what we need to do now is we need to attach the top. And since this is low right now, we need to raise it up. So I am just going to drop in some washers to bring it so that the runners are proud of the top. Now for the top, I'm gonna to be using half inch Baltic birch plywood. This is really nice stuff and is good for jig making because it's got multi layers and it's very stable. This is actually a piece from my old cross cut sled. So I'm gonna reuse it, you know, with the price of plywood right now. It's best to reuse if you can. So to attach the top, I moved my fence over to 15 and a half inches because the piece that I have is 31 and an eighth wide. So to have my blade in the center, I set it at 31 inches. And I'm gonna use some of Starbond's glues to attach the top because it dries fast. And then it'll allow me to pick it up and put some screws in. And we'll just put on the fence and we'll drop it on there. If you guys want to get some of the Starbond glue for yourselves, it's pretty awesome stuff. You can get an activator and you, this stuff comes in all sorts of different colors and thicknesses. It's really handy. It dries super fast and it's awesome for jig making because it's like an extra set of hands. But there'll be a link in the description and if you use the coupon code WEST15 at checkout, you get 15% off your purchase. Now it should be stuck. We can just lift it out and add some screws to it. Now when it's all screwed, just flip it over and make sure that it slides nicely. And mine is a little snug now, and that's okay. We'll just sand the runners a little bit until it dries smooth. Next we can go ahead and trim the runners off flush. Before I go any further, I have to build the back fence, and I'm gonna build it from two pieces of half inch plywood. I'm just gonna double them up I'm gonna make it four inches tall. It's gonna be slippery, but if you just wait a few minutes, it'll tack up enough that it won't slide and then you can just put your clamps on it. So I made a cut so that I know where the blade is gonna be. That way I don't put any screws there. Now I'm gonna center this on the cut and I made mine 20 inches long. So I'm just gonna mark 10 inches. And then I'm gonna use some Starbonds glue again, just to hold it in place until I get some screws into it. Now 
Now we're gonna raise our blade up and we're gonna make a cut all the way down to the end, but we're gonna stay about two inches from this back edge. Now the last thing we need to make is the fence itself and it's gonna consist of four pieces of plywood. It's half inch as well and we're gonna be doubling it all up. It's four inches tall and I have a piece here that's two and three quarters and then I'm gonna take a piece of T-track, put that in there, another piece of plywood that's a half inch and that's gonna get glued on there as well. But where the blade is gonna cut through, I'm actually gonna leave my T-track back about an inch on each side of the blade and the reason for that is my table saw, it's a saw stop and a way a saw stop works is anything that conducts electricity if it touches that blade it'll trip and aluminum is one of those things that will do that so you want to make sure you keep it clear of that blade so we're gonna leave it back about an inch and I made this little spacer block I still have to cut this down to two one inch blocks but that is gonna be your spacer so my friends at Zockmock tools they sent me the t-track for this build and thank you for that they actually sent me four lengths but for this build I only need one length I'm gonna be using the other three for another project and they also sent me a bunch of these cool Cool little pieces for intersecting corners. The T-Track that I have here, they're four foot lengths. I believe they have them in different lengths as well. And you can also get them in red and in blue. There'll be a link in the description if you want to get these for yourself. So now that I have my fence constructed, I now need to attach it to my sled. It has to be lined up with your blade at a perfect 90, and I'm gonna do the five cut method to do this. I'm not gonna explain how to do the five cut method because I don't entirely know myself how. I'm just gonna to try to figure it out as I go. There's lots of good videos on YouTube already on how to do the five cut method. So just Google that and uh, you'll figure it out. After all, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Wow, that five cut method worked really well. I was a little bit intimidated by it, but it's actually pretty simple. It's some simple math and um, I got it pretty close to perfect. So now I have to make the stop block for here and I'm gonna use some three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood to make that.
I'm really happy with how the stop block turned out. When it's tightened down, there is no play in it at all. It is rock solid. I can tell that I'm gonna be happy with this crosscut sled. It's a lot smaller than my old one. My old one was really large and it could cut like up to 24 inches wide. I think this one will do about 20 inches and it's that's big enough for what I need. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new to my channel, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you never miss when I upload a new video. And like always, we'll see you in the next one.